Oh, praise to the most high. So tonight's topic is called nation building. Nation building. So take notes, take your Bibles out and make notes. All right. This is a classroom, a place of learning. Make sure that you take notes. All right. So you can read along. All right. All praise to the most high. Tonight's topic is called nation building. Let's open up with the book of Isaiah chapter one, verse three. Isaiah chapter one, verse three. For us to understand how to build a nation, because we have not been taught how to be nation-minded as a nation. As a people, we are taught to be individual lights. You always think about yourself. You don't think about your nation. When you make decisions, you only think about you and only you. But when we come into this truth, the most High God, he doesn't want that thing. He doesn't want us to move in that spirit of me, myself, and I. It's about the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, before you get that, give me the book of Zephaniah 2, verse 1. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Watch this. This is what the Most High God commanded all Israelites scattered around the world. All right. Zephaniah 2, verse 1. Let's get that. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, or nation not desired. So now the most high God is commanding us, all 12, wherever we are scattered, he says we must gather ourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. We are a nation that is not desired by no nation on this earth. All the nations they hate and they despise, the black man, the Latino man, the Native American Indian man, they hate our guts. So the Lord he says, because you, they hate your guts, I'm commanding you to gather yourself together. And when we gather together, we don't gather together under politics. We don't gather together under Christianity. We don't gather together under Jehovah's Witness, Pentecostals, Bazalwani. Mm -mm. We don't gather together under none of those things. Give me the book of Baruch in the Apocrypha. Okay, Baruch 4 verse 37. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 37. Baruch chapter 4 verse 37. Come on. Lo. Thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. Mm -hmm. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. You see how we must gather ourselves together? We must gather ourselves together by the word of the Holy One. Not gather ourselves together under politics and religion, because that's how they divided our nation. That's how they divided us. They divided us into politics they divided. That's why in politics there's so many there's so many arguments. Some say no, me I'm I I side with Malema. I'm EFF. Another one says I'm ANC. Another one says I'm DA. Whatever, whatever, whatever. That's how they divided us. When you look in in religion, they divided us the same way. They divided us under ZCC. Uh, they divided us under Re Roman Catholic Church. You understand seven day seven day disadvantage. You understand Jehovah's wickedness. All of that, that's how they divided us as a people. You understand? But that's not what the Lord is commanding us. Read that again. Verse 37. Baruch chapter 4, verse 37. Go ahead. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. Mm -hmm. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. That's the only way the Most High God wants us to gather ourselves together, by the word. By his word. That's how we gather ourselves together. By the commandments of the Most High God. You understand? Give me that in Ephesians. Okay? Give me Ephesians 4. Because one of the biggest problems in Israel among our people is unity. We don't know how to come together as one. The Bible is the only way we're going to gather ourselves together because the Bible is a book of law and order and structure. And that's how we build our nation. Okay? Give me book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3. Start at verse 3. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Read. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. You see that part right there? It says endeavoring. To endeavor means to fight. You must fight to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That is a, that is a foreign word to the black man and the black woman today. Unity on one accord. Agreeing on the same thing. Believing the same thing. You understand? Same mind, same judgment. It's difficult for us to do that. Why? Because we've been divided up into all these different philosophies. So when we come together, it's very difficult for our people to come together because we're not coming with the word of the Most High. We're not moving with the spirit of Christ. You understand? Read verse four. There is one body. 
one body and that one spirit body, that body is the body of christ one spirit the spirit of christ right even as ye are called in one hope of your calling the one hope of our calling is that we when we repent keep god's commandments we will get the kingdom of heaven on earth that's the hope we all have go ahead one lord mm -hmm. one faith read one baptism you see that thing one lord that's jesus the christ one faith the faith in in the law in the on our lord and savior jesus the christ let me deal with that faith just for a second give me revelation 14 verse 12 revelation 14 verse 12 one lord that's jesus christ one faith let's read that revelation 14 verse 12 Revelation 14. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You see that thing? It says, We here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So, guess what? That faith comes with commandments. You cannot say you believe on Christ, but you're not keeping no commandments. You don't believe on Christ. You understand? Because that's what they taught, they teach our people in Christianity. That the laws of God are done away with. You don't have to keep no laws. That's why today our people, they think that all I have to do, I just have to believe in my heart that Jesus is in my heart. Jesus is in your heart, but you are buying on the Sabbath. Jesus is in my heart, but you are committing adultery, having sex outside of marriage. No, Jesus is not in your heart. Mm -mm. Satan is in your heart. You understand? Read that again. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Read. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So that faith, it comes with commandments. Let's get that in James now. Because the apostle James, he addressed this thing. Because that was a big confusion in Israel. You understand? So the apostle, Paul, the apostle James had to address it. Give me James 2 verse 24. James chapter 2 verse 24. Watch this. James chapter 2 verse 24. Mm-hmm. Ye see them how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. You see that thing? By works a man is justified, not by faith only. Because your, your works will prove your faith. Your works will prove that you have faith. That's why it says you keep the commandments and you have the faith in Jesus Christ. That's the gospel of Christ right there. Now let's go back, okay? Let's go back to where we was at. Ephesians, go back to Ephesians 4, verse 5 again. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5. Read. One Lord, one faith, one mm -hmm. baptism. This baptism is talking about one understanding. Because when you look at our people in the world, in, the, in these different Christian, Christianity, Christian churches under the banner of Christianity, guess what? They don't have one Lord. They don't have one faith. They don't have one baptism. The baptism is going into what? One understanding. And this is how you get the understanding of the Bible. Give me that in Psalms 111 and 10. Okay? The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. One bap the baptism goes into understanding. There's no such thing as, oh no, that's your interpretation. That's my interpretation. There's only one interpretation of the Bible. And we're going to show you that so everybody understands. Give me that in Psalms 111 and 10. Psalm chapter 111, verse 10. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise and glory forever. You see how you get a good understanding of the Bible? You must apply the laws of God. There is no any way around it. You cannot say you, 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 you believe in God, you understand the Bible, but you don't keep no laws. The most High God will not give you this sacred knowledge to anybody who does not do the will of the Father. That will never happen. That's why in our people, I'm going back to the Christian church, right? because the majority of our people are in there lost. They are the lost sheep in there. And they are being fed philosophies that man has made up. That's why people today, they believe things that are, wrong, that, that, that are not true. They believe lies. They believe fairy tales. Okay? Give me that in 2 Thessalonians so I can prove that. Okay, because the most High God, he talked about this thing that because our people, they don't want to hear the laws of God. This is what the Lord says he will do to our people. Give me that in 2 Thessalonians 2. Okay, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. Let's read that. 
Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. Go ahead. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Stop right there. It says with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Deceivableness of unrighteousness, deceivableness goes into sin. The deceit. Deceivableness goes into deceit. And with all deceit of unrighteousness. The unrighteousness is sin. Give me that in First John. So we can understand what it means, unrighteousness. First John chapter 5, verse 17. First John chapter 5, verse 17. Let's read that. First John chapter 5, verse 17. Come on. All unrighteousness is sin. You see that thing? All unrighteousness is sin. He's telling you what, it, what unrighteousness is. It's sin. Sin. The breaking of God's laws. So let's go back to 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 10, so we can under, better understand what the Apostle Paul is teaching us here in the Spirit of Christ. Read that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. Go ahead. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. So now we understand, with all deceit of sin, with all deceit of sin in them that perish, meaning those that die because they don't apply what is written. So because sin is deceitful. Sin, the breaking of God's laws, will deceive you, and eventually the Lord will put you to death because of that. Go ahead. Because they receive not the love of the truth. That's the key right there. Because they received not. They do, our people don't want to receive the love of the truth. Our people don't love the truth. They hate the truth of the Lord. They hid the truth of this Bible. He says, because they receive not the love of the truth. Go ahead. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Do you see what the truth will do? The truth will save you. The truth, when the Lord returns, the Lord, you will be delivered if you love the truth. What is the truth? The laws of God. So they are, the Lord is teaching us that because our people don't want to receive God's commandments, because our people, the reason why I'm bringing this out is because a lot of the times when we bring the laws, the laws of God out, we teach on the street and all that, our people say, don't judge me. But our people, they mistake, they, 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 they confuse correction with judgment. You understand? They confuse. The Lord is the one that is going to destroy you. So when the prophets come to teach you, repent, is to shield you from God's judgment that will come upon you. You understand? Read on. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion mm -hmm. that they should believe a lie. That's why our people today, they believe that they are saved, but they are still in slavery. They believe that they are saved, but we're still in poverty. They believe that they are saved. We're living in the ghettos. You understand? They believe that they are saved when the young men are filling up the prisons, when the young girls are committing abortion, heavy sex, teenage pregnancy, but we are saved. Né? No, we are not saved. Read that again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. Go ahead. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Our people believe lies because God has sent our people strong delusion. It's not just any type of delusion. It's a strong delusion, meaning it's so deep, it's so strong that, listen, it's like Christianity is, spirit, is basically spiritual nyaupe. It's spiritual cocaine. Christianity is the worst drug on the market and our people, they be sniffing it every Sunday when they go to church. Yeah, because we used to be up in there. They just believe things that they are not even written in the Bible. That's a strong delusion. Why? Because we don't want to receive the love of the truth. We hate God's commandments. That's the problem right there. You understand? Read verse 12. Come on. That they all might be damned who believe not that the they, truth. You see that part right there? It says that they all might be damned. Meaning what? They're going to go, they go, they're going to be condemned. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We know what unrighteousness is. Unrighteousness is sin, the breaking of God's laws. Our people have pleasure in sin. Because sin is pleasurable, but it's only for a moment. Keeping God's commandments will give you the kingdom, which is rulership of nations, forever you can't even compare the two you understand let's go back now ephesians 4 
Ephesians 4 verse 5. I just wanted to deal with that because the baptism is the understanding. So that what? The most High God is commanding us. That's, this is These are requirements for us to build a nation. We must be on one accord. That's one of the main things that black men, black women don't know how to do. The Bible is the only solution. Read that. Ephesians 4 verse 5. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 5. Go ahead. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. We must be on one accord. We must believe the same things that there be no divisions among us. You understand? The Bible says thou shalt not commit adultery. You must believe the same thing. What does that mean? Don't watch porn. Don't masturbate. Don't have sex outside of marriage. You understand? That's fornication. That's adultery. We believe the same thing. Guess what? We're going to be good. Why? Because we understand what the Bible is saying and we believe what it says. The way it's written. That's what the most High God is looking for, for us to come together in the spirit of Christ. It's not going to happen. And the Christ we're talking about is the, the Christ of the Bible, the black man. You understand who died for his people, the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, nation building. We need to understand something because when we build a nation, you first need to understand nationality. You understand? Because you need to understand that what nationality, the nationality you come out of so that you know who you are, so that you can better understand how to build your nation, you understand, that you come out of. Because you don't just go out and go be building China's nation. Because right now we're building the white man's nation in a sense, well, we, those of our people that don't know, you understand, they are busy trying to keep the, 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 the machine of Babylon running because they don't know who they are. And that's the most important thing for our people to know first and foremost nationality identity who they are before they can start building their nation they must know the nation they come out of give me the book of isaiah chapter 1 verse 3 because this is what isaiah prophesied okay isaiah chapter 1 verse 3 read that isaiah chapter 1 verse 3 read the ox knoweth his owner mm -hmm. and the ass his master's creed read but israel does not know Mm. my people does not consider so now israel is god's people the most High god is speaking through isaiah saying the ox know this owner the ox is a cow in como okay and the ass is master script that's a donkey the donkey know where he comes from the donkey knows where he comes from his his place of origin you understand he says but israel doesn't know israel doesn't know who their owner is Israel does not know where they come from. You understand? He says, my people does not consider. It does not even enter our mind to investigate who owns us, who's, who our God is, and where we come from. You understand? We are suffering from identity crisis. That's why you see how people do the things they do to themselves because they don't know how great they are. You understand? Read that again, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. Come on. The ox knoweth his owner, mm -hmm. and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know, my people does not consider. So I want to deal with that, because once you know who, you, who, who owns you, you automatically want to know where you come from. Because your owner will give you identity. Once you know your identity, you will know where you come from, your place of origin. Your owner is going to give you your identity, where you who you are and where you come from. That's what an owner does. Is you ever seen you buy you buy you buy a phone, you buy a, I don't know, you buy a fridge. It comes with a manual. You see manufactured. Where was it? You see the name of the brand, Samsung. You see where it comes from. No, it was manufactured in China. Likewise, the Most High God is trying to show us that we don't know the the fact that we don't know who our God is, our owner. That means we don't know, we, are, we have no identity. Secondly, we don't know where we come from. And it does not even enter into our minds. Because in the place of our captivity, we are taught democracy, you are taught you are free. Yet, but when you look at the condition of your people, you see that you are not free. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. Let's deal with the, 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 the man that owns us. You understand? Our owner. Watch this. Joel 2 verse 27. Let's read that. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. Come on. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Mm -hmm. 
and that I am the Lord your God and none Wait. else. You see that thing? Go read that again. Read that again. Joel 2 verse 27 again. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. Great. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. So now this is God speaking. He says, you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Okay. I'm in the midst of Israel. Read on. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. Wait. You see what he's telling us? He says, I am the Lord your God and none else. He's not the God of everyone. He's the God of Israel that he is in the midst of. He's telling us, I'm your owner. I own you. You are mine. You are my people and none else. You see that thing? So now, that's why, so God is teaching us in Isaiah that we are dumber than an ox and a donkey. Because he's telling you that the, the, the cow, a dumb animal, knows who owns him. The donkey, that another dumb animal, the donkey knows where he comes from. Because the donkey, you can, you can leave the house, you can leave the yard. The donkey will roam around the bushes and all, the, the donkey will find his way home. You understand? But he says, Israel doesn't know. We are lost. We are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 63 verse 16. We're still dealing with our owner. Who owns us? Okay. Isaiah 63 verse 16. Read that. Isaiah chapter 63 verse 16. Go ahead. Doubtless thou art our father, though Abraham be ignorant of us, it says, though Abraham be ignorant of us, because we didn't live during the time of Abraham. So that's why it says, though Abraham be ignorant of us. Come on. And Israel acknowledges not. Because we didn't see Israel with our eyes. You understand? That's why it says, and Israel acknowledge us not. Read. Thou, O Lord, art our father. You see that thing? Our Hold redeemer. On. Wait, wait, wait. Thou, O Lord. The God of Israel and none else, he says, thou, O Lord, this is Isaiah speaking, but thou, meaning you, O Lord, you are our father. You are our owner. You own us. Go ahead. We are your children. Go ahead. Our redeemer. Mm -hmm. Thy name is from everlasting. So the Most High God is our father and he is our redeemer. He will deliver us from the hands of our enemies that are holding us prisoners here. In South Africa, in China, in America, in Europe, you understand? In Russia, wherever people in India, wherever in Saudi Arabia, wherever, wherever our people are scattered, we are prisoners in those in those lands. We are prisoners here. You understand? So the Lord is the one that is going to deliver us from the hands of our enemies. He is going to redeem us. Go ahead. Verse 17. Read. Oh Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways? Mm-hmm. And hardened our heart from thy fear. Come on. Return for thy servant's sake, the tribes of thy inheritance. You see what he's saying? He says, return for thy servant's sake. We are the servants of the Lord, the tribes of thine inheritance. Which, When he says tribes, he talk about the 12 tribes of Israel. So Isaiah is pleading with the Lord. He says, why hast thou, why hast thou made us to err from thy way? And harden our hearts from thy fear. Because if you look at our people today, our people, they have no fear of the Lord. They do whatever they want. Why? Because they don't know who they are and the things they do to themselves. If they knew who they are, they would never do the things they do to themselves and the things they do to their own brothers and sisters. So that's what we are bringing now. Our people to know who they are so that they know how to treat themselves correctly, like, like royalty. You understand? Because we are royalty. We are the apple of God's eye. Read. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Mm -hmm. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. Because the king, the Jerusalem was destroyed by the white man in 70 AD, the Romans. But we possess the kingdom only for a little while. For 80 years. During the time of King David and during the time of King Solomon. You understand? Come on. Verse 19. We are thine. We are what? We are thine. You see, Isaiah is repeating verse 16 again. We are thine. We belong to the Father. The Most High God is our owner. You understand? He is our owner. Read. Thou never bearest rule over them. So Isaiah is saying, the Lord never ruled over these nations. 
that's the same thing that Joel said, that I am in the midst of Israel and none else. He says, thou never bearest rule over them. The most High God has never been the God of these other nations. You understand? Read. They were not called by thy name. With the, the nations were never called by the name of the Lord. They were never called by God's name. Give me that in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 6. The other nations were never called by God's name. You understand? Read that. 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 6. Watch this. 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 6. Read. But I have chosen Jerusalem that mm -hmm. my name might be there. You see that thing? He says, I have chosen Jerusalem. We are Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. He says, I have chosen Jerusalem, which is us, the black man, the black woman, Latino man, and Native American Indian man. Go ahead. And have chosen David to be over my people, Israel. You see, the most High God, he only gave his name to us. He never gave his name to other nations. You understand? So that's what Isaiah is trying to show us. Give me that in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 36. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 36. We're still dealing with our, who owns us. Because your owner will give you your identity. Once you, know you have your identity, your identity will also reveal your place of origin. Okay? Read that. 1 Chronicles 16, verse 36. Let's read that. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 36. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. Mm. And all the people said, Amen, and praised Amen. the Lord. You better praise. praise the Lord for that thing, okay? You better praise the Most High God for that. Because today, we are afraid to praise the Lord. We are afraid to say, God only love us. Don't be ashamed of that. You must be proud of that thing. You understand? That's why King David says, you better praise the Lord. You better praise the Lord that the most high God is, is, the, is the God of Israel and nobody else is God. And he put his name on us. Read that again, verse 36. Come on. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 36. Go ahead. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. Mm. And all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. All the people said, Amen, meaning we agree with this thing. You better, you better agree and praise the Lord that he is the God of Israel forever and ever. You understand? That's not going to change. Go back to Isaiah now. Chapter 1, verse 3 again. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. Now we dealt with our identity. You understand? Because our owner will, your owner will give you your, your identity. You understand? Read that. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3 again. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. Read. The ox knoweth his owner. And mm -hmm. the ass, his master's crib. Stop right there. Now, he says, the ox knows his owner. Now, we just discovered who our owner is. Is the most High God, the, the God of heaven and earth. The living God. You understand? Then he says, the ass, his master's crib. Meaning the donkey knows where he comes from. His place of origin. Watch this. But he says, Israel doesn't know. Today, you're going to find out that thing. Give me Hebrews 11 verse 14. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 14. Because this is what our forefathers, this is, this is, our forefathers, this was their mindset. Unlike the mindset of our people today. Read that. Hebrews 11 verse 14. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 14. Read. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. So now it says they that say such things declare plainly. So we have to declare plainly that we seek a country. How do we make, do, how do we make it plain? I'll show you how we declare it plainly. Give me the book of 2 Ezra, okay? Give me 2 Ezra, chapter 2. 2 Ezra, in the Apocrypha. 2 Ezra, chapter 2, and verse, verse 36. Watch this. 2 Ezra 2, verse 36. 2 Ezra. Chapter 2, verse 36. Mm -hmm. Flee the shadow of this world. Meaning receive. the sin. The shadow goes into the sin. Captivity, slavery. You understand? Read. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive mm -hmm. the joyfulness of your glory. Come I on. testify my Savior openly. 
You see that thing? We testify our Savior openly. Who is our Savior? Jesus the Christ. He is our Lord and Savior. So we testify him openly because we declare plainly that we seek a country, that this is not our homeland, that we are not Africans or South Africans. We are not Gentiles. We are the children of Israel. We are the Jews the Bible speaks of. We declare that plainly, that we seek our country. We want to go back home, Jerusalem. You understand? Go back to where he was at now. Hebrews 11, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 14. Read. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Come on. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might Come have on. had opportunity to have returned. You see what the Apostle Paul is saying? It says, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country, because right now our people, they think, no, South Africa is their homeland. No, this is our country. You see these xenophobias, xenophobia be going on because the so-called South Africans, they think this is their country. No, no, this is not your homeland, you so-called South African. The people, we, who did we find here when we arrived? We found the Khoisans. The Khoi Khoi, this is their country. We found them here. That's why if you look at your money, your 10 rand, your 20 bucks, your 50 rand, you see Khoisans on the money. They are the owners of this land on this side. This is not our land. But you see, we don't read. You look at them, you, you'll be buying Morocco every day, but you don't look at the money that you are holding. You understand? You see Khoisans on the money. We found them here. They are the true owners of the land. We are foreigners here. Understand that. Read verse 13 so we can prove what I'm saying. Reverse 13, because this is what our forefathers were saying, wherever they were scattered, wherever they were slaves, this is the, this is what's their mindset. Unlike the Negro today, okay? The darky today. Read that, verse 13. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. Come on. These all died in faith, mm -hmm. not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were That's persuaded of them. That our forefathers and foremothers, they did not receive the promises, meaning the kingdom yet, but have seen them afar off because it's generations, thousands of years later, we still don't have the kingdom yet. We are going to get it when the Lord returns. Go ahead. And embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. You see that thing? Our forefathers, they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth, foreigners. So today, our people, are, they have lost themselves. They don't know who they are so much so that they think this is their country. No, no, it's not. We came here running, you understand, because our temple was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. And then we fled down here under, during the Bantu migration. You understand? That's why we ended up here. Some of us, we ended up in the Congo. Some of us, we ended up in Gabon. Some of us, we ended up in Rwanda. You understand? In Guinea especially the majority of the Bantu migration migrated from the Gulf of Guinea down here. You understand? Because we were running from Jerusalem and we started to go deeper into the continent of Africa. We started to change our names, to hide ourselves. You understand? To take on the cultures of the people that we found in those lands. You understand? Now, read verse 15 now again. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 15. And really? truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they mm. might have had opportunity to have returned. That's why now we have not returned to our homeland yet. Why? Because we are not mindful of where we come from. I mean, Master KG even released a song called Jerusalem. Our people just be dancing to the song, but they don't understand. That's a spiritual song right there. Because it says, Jerusalem. But it doesn't even enter into the mind of the black man that actually <laughs> that song is telling you that you are not at, you are not home. You are far from home. That song, that song of Master KG is telling you that you are not home, black man. But our people, they just be they just be bumping their heads, you know, they are nodding, they are dancing, but they don't even listen to what the song is saying. When you read the book of Psalms, David keeps talking about that. You understand? So today, now we are waking up to that thing. Understand that. Read on. 
but now they desire a better country that is now, heaven. Na, hold on. Now is this, but now they desire a better country. Now that we know who we are now, we are the Israelites, the Bible speaks of. Now we desire a better country because we have remembered who we are. Now we know that we are the children of Israel. Now we want to go home. You understand? Read. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Could you read that verse again? Read verse 16 again. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 16. Read. But now they desire a better country mm -hmm. that is in heaven. We desire a better country that is in heaven. Meaning what? The kingdom of heaven on earth. That's the country now we desire now. You understand? Come on. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Read. For he has prepared for them a city. So now, because our, as a nation, we are not declaring that we are strangers and pilgrims here. We think this is our country. We think this, we are home. The God is, um, the most High God says, I'm ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of you, you Israelites, because you are not declaring that you seek a better country. You'll be fighting for South Africa as if this is your homeland. No, it's not your homeland. So because our people don't want to actually renounce the fact that they are South Africans, because remember, if imagine you say you are a South African. Let's just think about that word, right? South. South is a direction, first and foremost. Africa is a name of a white man named Leo Scipio Africanus. So is that, in an, is that your identity? Direction and the name of a white man. That makes sense? That doesn't make any sense. But we are proudly calling ourselves South Africans. That's why God says, I'm ashamed to be called your God now. Because you're not calling yourself Israelites, the names I gave you. you calling yourself by the name of your slave masters. Looking foolish out here. You understand? Read it again. Verse 16. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 16. Go ahead. But now they desire a better country mm -hmm. that is in heaven. Read. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. So God has prepared to us a city. What city? New Jerusalem that's coming. We are, New Jerusalem is being built right now. Understand that. Watch this. Give me Micah 2 verse 10. Okay, Micah. Micah chapter 2, verse 10. Micah chapter 2, verse 10. Read. Arise ye and depart. Mm -hmm. For this is not your rest. That's the, what the Lord is telling us now. He says, wake up, arise ye and depart. Meaning, wake up from your sleep, you Israelites. Give me Isaiah 52, verse 1. He says, arise ye and depart. Isaiah. Okay. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Mm -hmm. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. You see what the Lord is commanding us? He says, wake up. Awake. Awake, you Israelites. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. What is our strength? The Bible is our strength. You understand? The laws of God, that's our power right there that we have with the Most High. So the Lord, if somebody says awake, that means you are sleeping. That's why God is saying awake, wake up, you Israelites. That's what the Lord is commanding us because we are sleeping out here. We are sleeping to who we are. We are unconscious to who we are, that we are the children of Israel. You are unconscious. You don't know. You call yourself Mupe, Dilimuzul, Congolese. You are sleeping, the Lord is saying. Read again, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1. Come on. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Mm -hmm. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the so holy now, city. The Lord is commanding us to wake up. You understand? The Lord is commanding us to wake up. That's why in Micah it says, arise ye and depart. Meaning, wake up. You understand? Wake up to who you are and take all of this Bible and apply it and wake up your nation so we can go home. That's what the Lord is commanding us. You understand? But our people, they are still enjoying the pleasures of sin. So they don't want to let go of their pleasures of sin. You understand? Give me that in Proverbs 21 verse 16. Read that. Proverbs 21 verse 16. 
Read. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Right now, our people, because they are still unconscious to who they are, meaning what? They are sleepwalking. You are sleepwalking. Every day you wake up, you go to work, broad daylight, but you are, the Lord is saying, you are sleepwalking because you are sleeping to who you truly are. You don't know who you are. You understand? So he says, because we are wandering out of the way of understanding, we are no longer keeping God's commandments, his laws. He says, we are in the congregation of the dead. Christianity, congregation of the dead. Politics, congregation of the dead. Democracy, congregation of the dead. All these pagan customs, congregation of the dead. The only time when the Lord says you are alive is when you keep his commandments. Then you wake up to who you are. That's why it says, awake. This is not your rest. Okay, go back to Micah 2 verse 10 again. Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Arise ye and depart. Mm -hmm. Wake up. He says, arise, meaning wake up, awake you Israelites. Okay, and depart. Why is he saying depart? Watch this. We coming back here. Give me the book of Revelation 18. Give me Revelation 18 and verse 4. He says, arise ye and depart. This is how you did. This is what he's saying right here. Read that. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Read. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, mm. that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her place. You see what God is saying? It says, It says, What come out of her, my people? Who is God's people? The Israelites. He says, come out of here. Who's the hair? America. You understand? Come out of America because America has powerful influence over all nations on earth. They push homosexuality. They push 50-50. They push uh, children can have sex at a young age. They push that children can change their sex, meaning a child, a, a child can say, no, I don't want to be a woman anymore. I want to be a boy. They go and do surgery. You understand? That's what America is pushing. They are pushing democracy. They are pushing you live a life without no consequence. You understand? That's why you see LGBTs all over. You, you, you see that thing? But no, that's how I feel. That's why the Lord is saying, come out of here, my people, and be not partakers of her sins. Don't partake in the sins of America and that you receive not of her plagues because America is going to be wiped out from the face of the earth when the Lord returns. So the Lord is saying, come out of here. Stop celebrating Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day. You understand? Easter. That's not what the Lord commanded us. The Lord didn't give us none of that stuff. So the Lord is saying, come out of, come out of here, my people. Go back to Micah now. Micah 2 verse 10, once again. That's how we depart. Like we read in Revelation 18 verse 4. Read that again. Micah 2 verse 10. Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Read. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Mm -hmm. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, mm. even with the sore destruction. You see what God is saying? He says, this place is going to destroy you. Their philosophies, their customs, their religious system, their political system, their economic system to destroy the black man and the black family. The Lord is saying, this place is polluted, is going to destroy you with a sore destruction. He says, come out of it. Why? Because you must be mindful of where you come from. This is not your rest. God didn't bring us here for us to rest. He brought us here to repent of our sins. You understand? We were here to serve our prison sentence. While we are serving our prison sentence, we are acknowledging the offenses that we committed against the Lord our God. So we can what? Be released out of prison and go home. Now, give me that in Galatians 4 verse 26. This is the place that we must be mindful of that the Apostle Paul was, is, was explaining. Galatians 4, verse 26. Let's read that. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Read. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, mm -hmm. which is the mother of us all. You see that thing? Jerusalem is the top government on earth. When the Lord returns, is going to be the top government on earth. So it says, but Jerusalem, which is above, is above everybody. We are above everybody. 
which is the mother of us all. Who's the us? The children of Israel. That's where we come from. That's what the Apostle Paul, that's what Isaiah was teaching us, that we don't know where we come from. And because you don't know who your owner is, who your owner is supposed to give you identity and is supposed to give you your place of origin. And that's what the Lord does. He gives us our identity. He gave us our identity and our place of origin. Jerusalem. You understand? Watch this. Now go back to Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. Before you can begin to build your nation, you must understand first which nation you come out of. So now that you know which nation you come out of, that you come out of the nation of Israel, now you begin to understand. Now, okay, now that I understand, what must I do now to build my nation? Now that you know who you are, where you come from. Okay, Isaiah 1 and 3. Read that. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. Come on. The ox knoweth his owner, and the mm -hmm. ass his master's crib. Read. But Israel does not know, my people does not consider. Now we know, and now we consider where we come from, who we are. We know that we are the children of Israel. We broke the laws of God. We forgot our nationality and our identity and where we come from. But watch the, what the Lord said he will do. Give me that in Baruch 3 verse 8. Okay. Give me Baruch 3 verse 8. Because of our sins, this is what would happen to us in the last days. Okay, Baruch chapter 3 in the Apocrypha. Baruch chapter 3 verse, verse 8. Read that. Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. In our what? In our captivity. We are yet this day, 2021, we are still in slavery. That's what Baruch is saying. We are yet this day in our slavery under the 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 oppressive system of apartheid, the oppressive system of colonization and forced migration, slavery, oppression, depression. You understand? Read. Where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse mm -hmm. and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from the Lord our God. So the reason why we are in slavery is, and the Lord, we, the Lord has scattered us. You understand? We are in slavery right now, where the Lord has scattered us. You understand? For a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payment. That's why you are always paying for something. You pay tax, okay? You pay vet, tax, vet. You, everything, you must pay for everything. Education, whatever you want, you must pay for it. You understand? We always, you, we always in debt as a nation because of what? Because of our sins. Because we broke the laws of God. So now it says, according to all the iniquities, meaning the sins of our forefathers, which departed from the Lord our God. Now we are in slavery. You understand? And this is what the Most High God said about us when we are in slavery. What would happen to us in slavery? We're in captivity right now, right? Watch this. Give me First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. This is what the Lord, this is the mercy of the Lord upon the 12 tribes of Israel. This is what the Lord said he would do when we are in slavery. Well, this is what he would say he will do for us. Watch this. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Read that. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Read. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. So now King Solomon is prophesying about the last days. He is prophesying about what would happen to us as a people in the latter days. You understand? It says, if we sin against the Lord, for there is no man that sinneth not, because all, as, all of us as a nation, we sinned. We broke every law in this Bible. That's why we ended up in slavery. You understand? It says, and, and thou be angry with them. Look, just, just look at what happened during apartheid. You understand? The killing of our sons and daughters, our mothers and fathers, they took, they took our homes. Look at Sophia Town. During D.F. Milan, he, he bombed Sophia Town. We had businesses in Sophia Town. We had, bank, we had hotels. We had property. We had real estate. We had restaurants and all of that. We had everything. He bombed it. You, you understand that? So 
These are the things that we went through as a people for breaking the laws of God. And thou be angry with them. That is an example of the Lord being angry with us. And deliver them to the enemy. So the most High God, he delivered us to our enemies. South Africa is the land of our enemies. You understand? Congo, Gabon, America, North, Central, and South, China, India, Japan. You understand? North Korea. Okay? Um, Saudi Arabia, Russia. These are the lands of our captivity. Europe, Britain. You understand? These are all the lands where the Lord has scattered us because of our sins. Okay? Read that again, verse 46. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Read. If they sin against thee, mm -hmm. for there is no man that sinneth not, Come on. and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. So the most High God allowed us to be carried away to the lands of our enemies, far from Jerusalem, near to Jerusalem. Because there's our people in there around Jerusalem and stuff like that, but they are not ruling in the land. They are slaves. Next verse, come on. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they would carry captives mm -hmm. and repent. Stop right there. It says, but it says, yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they were carried captives and repent. So in the lands of our captivity, because that's where we are now, like Baruch said, we are in the lands of our captivity. But the Lord is saying, yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land of their enemies. What does that mean, to bethink yourself? Let's go to the book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30, so we can understand what it means to bethink. We must bethink ourselves in the lands of our slavery, okay, and repent. Watch this. Baruch chapter 2, verse 30. Let's read that. Baruch chapter 2, verse 30. Mm -hmm. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. Mm. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, he knows that we are not going to listen to him because we are a stiff-necked people. You know, the most, the stubbornest people on this earth is us. Listen, we are stubborn as a donkey. You understand? The most I cannot get through to us, but he, the only way the Lord could get through to us was to put us in slavery and allow these nations to oppress us, to destroy us, to belittle us. You, you understand? To humiliate us. That is the only way we could get, the Lord could get our attention. Because we don't get it when the Lord is just talking to us. We only get it when the Lord says, okay, let me, let, 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 let me show you how angry I am. That's the only time when the black man and the black woman, they get their minds right. Katumpa. That's the only way. Now, read that again. Verse 30. Baruch chapter 2 verse 30. Read. For I knew that they would not hear me because mm -hmm. it is a stiff-necked people. Stubborn. Read. But in, the, but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. They will bethink themselves. That's what the word bethink means. Bethink means remember. The Lord is saying in the lands of our captivity, we are going to remember who we are. How are you going to remember? The Lord will send the prophets to the streets to wake you up. So you can remember that, listen, you are not Mtsonga, you are a Jew. As an example, the prophets will go to the streets to wake the people up so the people can remember, wait a minute, what? I'm an Israelite? Yes, that's say the Lord. That's what's going on right now. Go back to First Kings now. Chapter 8, verse 47. 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 47. Read. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives and mm -hmm. repent. And what? And repent. So now the Lord is saying we will remember who we are in the land where we were carried captives. How were we carried captives into these lands? Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. Okay. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. This is how we were carried captives into these lands of our captivities. 
you understand, to serve our prison sentence. Read that. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Lord, this is Moses speaking, because of God's judgment, because of us breaking the laws of God, he says the Lord is going to bring us into Egypt again. Let's get the definition of the word Egypt. Go to the book of Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20 verse 2. The Lord says Exodus. he will bring us, hold on, he says he will bring us into Egypt again. Because the first time when we went into Egypt, we walked. If you read Exodus 1 verse 1 down, it was Jacob, our forefather Jacob and our, 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 uh, uh, and us, we went into Egypt. Okay? Now the Lord is saying, I'm going to bring you into Egypt the second time now. Watch this. Exodus 20 verse 2. Read that. Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. Read. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You see what Egypt, in Egypt means, the house of bondage. Egypt means the house of slavery. So go back to Deuteronomy 28 now. Verse 68 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So now the Moses is prophesying. He says, listen, you're going to go into slavery the second time again. But this time, you're going to go on slave ships, cargo slave ships, where the nations are going to pack you, the white men, the Chinese men, the Arab men, the Hamites, the ancient Egyptians, they are going to pack you on the slave ships. You are going to be scattered all over the world. You are going to be sold when you get there. Keep going. Read. By the way where I spake unto thee, mm -hmm. thou shalt see no more again. Read. And there he shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. You see what Moses is saying? He says, once we get off the slave ships, he says, and there ye shall be sold. You will be packed on slave ships. You will be transported to an, another location, a new country where you've never been. And when you get there, when you get off the slave ships, your enemies are going to sell you. You are going to be sold for slave men, meaning slave women, I mean slave men and slave women, bond men and bond women. Our mothers and fathers, our children would be sold on the slave auction blocks. Cape Town, it happened. There was a huge slave trade happening in Cape Town of our people. You understand? The, the west coast of Africa, the Gulf of Guinea, there was a lot of slave trade going on there to sell our people to North, Central, and South America in China and India, okay? And that's what Moses prophesied, and that's exactly what happened to us. That's how we were scattered. Not all of us were on slave ships. Watch this. Give me the book of Luke 21, verse 20. Luke 21. I'm dealing with that because the Lord is saying, King Solomon is prophesying, he said, we will be carried where we were carried away captives. How? On slave ships, that's one. Another way we are going to be carried away captives, this is how. Luke, 20, Luke 21, verse 20. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. Come on. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So Christ is prophesying, say, listen, when you see Jerusalem surrounded with the Roman armies, you must know that the destruction of Jerusalem is nigh. So now Christ is going to teach us what we must do when that thing happens. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. He says those that are in Judea, those that are in Judea, meaning which is what? In southern, southern Israel. Those that are in Judea, he says, flee to the mountains. What is the mountain making reference to? Give me the book of Matthew chapter 2. Those that are in Judea, those that are in Israel, what must you do? He says, flee, meaning run. Meaning run, meaning you are going to be forced to leave your country. You are going to be forced to leave your homeland. That's what Christ is teaching us. Okay? Give me Matthew 2 verse 13. Matthew. 
chapter 2, verse 13. Read. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, mm -hmm. Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And do what? And flee into Egypt. And run. Run into Egypt. That's the mountains we're reading about in Luke 21. Go ahead. And be thou there until I bring thee word. Read. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So now, this is during the time of Joseph and Mary. The angel visited Joseph and said, listen, Herod will want to kill the baby Christ. So take your wife and your son and go and hide in Egypt. Because Egypt was black people was there. It wasn't our people, but they were black. They look like us in terms of their, their skin tone. He says, go and hide among other black people so that the white man does not come and kill the baby. So the same thing that was told to Joseph and Mary is the same thing that Christ is teaching us that we must do. When you see Jerusalem, Roman armies wanting to come in to destroy you, run into Africa. That's how we ended up deeper into the continent of Africa. Ghana, you understand, Congo, the Gulf of Guinea, Gabon, you understand, Mozambique. That's how we ended up South Africa, Zambia, Namibia. We ended up here because of that. We were running. Forced migration, that's what it's called. Okay, Luke 21, verse 21 again. Luke chapter 21, verse 21. Come on. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Read. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Mm -hmm. And let not them that are in the countries enter there into. So Christ is commanding us, listen, those that are in the midst thereof depart. Don't remain in Jerusalem because it's going to be destroyed. You understand? That's what he's saying right here. Go ahead. Verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance. Judgment. That these be the days of judgment because Christ is telling us that the curses that are written in Deuteronomy 28, they are going to be fulfilled. You're going to go on slave. You're going to go into slavery. You are going to experience colonization and forced migration. You are going to be kicked out of your homeland and your temple is going to be burned down. By who? The white man. Go ahead. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. Because the things that were written is talk about the judgments in Deuteronomy 28. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 10. Because when we ran deeper into the continent of Africa, we started to scatter around. You understand? Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 10. Watch this. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 10. Read. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, my suppliants, even my suppliants, mm -hmm. even the daughter of my dispersed shall bring mine offering. So now this is Zephaniah's prophesying about, because remember Christ's command, is, he said, we are going to what? We must flee into, in, into the mountains, meaning run deeper into the continent of Africa. You understand? So Zephaniah is, command, is prophesying that once we, after the, the prophecy that Christ said it was going to happen to us, guess what? We will be beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Meaning what? We will be on the central, in Central Africa, in the West Coast. We'll be scattered around those areas, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. You understand? Central Africa, west coast of Africa. You understand? Um, the south, the uh, southeast, Mozambique and so forth. Monomotapa and those places. We would be scattered over there. That's what Zephaniah is saying right here. Read that again, verse 10. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 10. Mm -hmm. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliers, even the daughter of my dispersed shall bring mine offering. You see what he's saying? Even the daughters of my, the daughter of my dispersed. Who's the dispersed? Give me, give me the book of James, chapter 1, verse 1. James 1. Even the daughter of my dispersed. Okay? James 1 and 1. Let's see who are the dispersed. Okay? Read that. James, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. 
So now we are on this side of the earth, we are called the diaspora because we were scattered all over the continent of Africa on this side. You understand? Not all Israel was going to go on slave ships, but we were going to experience forced migration and colonization. And that's what we experienced on this side of the earth. That's why it says, even the daughter of my dispersed, meaning the 12 tribes of Israel scattered on this side beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. You understand? So when we scattered over there in, in the, on the continent, we were scattered all Nigeria, Niger, Chad, you understand? Uh, Mauritania. We, we went to St. Thomas, you understand? Gulf of Guinea, all, the, all those places, you understand? Cape Verde Islands. So we ended up migrating down. Now I'm going to show you something, okay? Give me Zephaniah 3 verse 12 now. Zephaniah 3 verse 13. I'm going to share my screen, okay? Because I just want to share so I can show you on the map because we, should, we are visual learners. We want to see. So I'm going to share my screen so you can see. Zephaniah 3 verse 13. Let's read that. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 13. Mm -hmm. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity. So now the people that will be... No be hold on. The people that will be scattered beyond the rivers of Ethiopia is what? The remnant of Israel. That's us right now. You understand? Now, let me share my screen. Okay, let me share my screen real quick. So I just want to show you on the map. Um, I want to show you on the map. So what you're looking at here is, you see, when we, when, when, when we scattered all over, you see that, that, that blue line right there, that blue circle on the map, that's the Gulf of Guinea right there. So when you look at all these, um, these, these areas here, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Togo, Benin, Nigeria, Cameroon, Gabon, Congo, DRC, Angola. These are the people, these are the places that we scattered to. You understand? And when you see here, you see right there, right there? When we were coming from Jerusalem, we ended up here. You see the, you see the red arrow? That's the transatlantic slave trade. When... Our, some of our mothers and fathers and sons, they were taken to North and Central and South America. The rest of us, we started to migrate down, the Bantu expansion. We started to migrate because we were the same people because we were running from Jerusalem. So we ended up here. We started to move down to the, towards the South. You understand? But this is the areas that we were, we were, we were primarily occupied. I'm not saying Mali, Senegal, you understand? We was not there. No, Sierra Leone. No, we was there, of course. But I'm trying to show you that, especially us, the so-called Bantus, yes, we were here. Cameroon, majority of us was in Cameroon. You understand? And the capital city of Cameroon is Yahond. Yahond is the capital city of Cameroon. You know what Yahond means? Judah. Yahond, Judah. So the majority of us, we were coming from Cameroon. We ended up here in South Africa. You understand? Under the great Bantu migration. So I just wanted to show you that so you can see, you understand, um, how, how we, we traveled and so forth. All right? All praises to the most High. Okay, so um, let's go to give me Give me the book of Zechariah, okay? Give me Zechariah, because now, now that we understand that we are on this side of the earth, you understand, South Africa, Congo, and all of that stuff, the most High God says, I will wake you up. You understand? Remember, he says, they will bethink themselves in the land of their captivity. So what you are seeing right now, we are bethinking ourselves. It's us remembering who we are, so we can return back to the Father. But before you get that, go back to First Kings chapter 8, so I can finish that out. All right. First Kings chapter 8, verse 47. Read that again. First Kings chapter 8, verse 47. Read. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land mm -hmm. whither they were carried captives. Now, the reason why I went to Zephaniah and Luke 21 is to show you how we were carried captives. You understand? On slave ships and via uh, forced migration and colonization. 
Go ahead. And repent. And what? And repent. We must repent in these lands. Once we remember who we are, the next step is, now that you know that you are a Jew, you are an Israelite, you're, the next step is, you must repent now. First, you are given your identity. The Lord says, I'm going to restore identity to you. So you no longer call yourself a South African, but a Jew. Secondly, the next step is, you must repent. That's the next step. Repentance. That's the key to salvation right there. Give me that in Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Let's understand what it means to repent. Okay. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. The book of Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Come on. Repent ye therefore and be converted. And what? And be converted. So when you repent, there's a stipulation, there's a requirement. When you repent, the Lord is commanding you that you must be converted. You can't say I'm, I, I am saved because our people, let me go back to Christianity again. There are people in the Christian church that say, no, they, they, they have repented. They are saved. They are washed with the blood of Jesus. But when you examine their lifestyle, it does not match what is written in this Bible. Okay? I'm going to get on the women. The women, especially our sisters, because they are the ones that are filling up the church and homosexual men. They are the ones that are in the Christian church. They'll be saying, no, no, I have repented. I'm saved. I'm washed with the blood of Jesus. But every Sabbath when we are on the streets, keep on up a piece by a goody. Pick and pay. They are buying on the Sabbath day, but they say, no, I'm repented. I'm washed with the blood of Jesus. You, you understand? Because that's an example to show you that our people don't understand what it means to repent. Okay? Read that again. Acts 3 verse 19. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Stop right there. The first thing, when you repent... God is commanding us that we must be converted. To convert it means to be changed. You must be changed. Give me that in 2nd Esdras chapter 14 in the Apocrypha. 2nd Esdras chapter 14 verse 34. 2nd Esdras chapter 14 and verse 34. Let's read that. This is what it means to, to repent and to be converted. This is, what to, this is what needs to happen to your thought process. The way you think. Read that. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34. Read. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding mm -hmm. and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. So God is commanding us, he says, we must subdue. If you say you are converted, you, are, you have repented, he says you must subdue your own understanding. You must, you must let go of everything that you know. Because our own understanding today is what? Television. Our own understanding today is what? Social media, DSTV, SABC. That's the black man and the black woman's understanding today. If you take away TV, if you take away social media, the black man and the black woman, they have no opinion. They cannot talk about anything because the, your opinion is what the white man is pushing through television and social media. Our people have no opinions. They, their thoughts don't belong to them. Everything that the black man says, that thought does not belong to him. Everything that the black woman says, that thought does not belong to her. Somebody put that thought in her mind through Facebook, through WhatsApp, through Twitter, Instagram. You understand? DSTV is buyer. That's how, that's, that's everything that comes out of their mouth is not out of this Bible. So our people have no thoughts. Somebody else has control over their thought process. You understand? Read that again. Verse 34. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34. Read. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding mm -hmm. and reform your heart. Stop right there. And what? And reform your heart. Change your thinking. The way you think must change. That's what God is commanding. That's what it means to repent and be changed. You have to subdue everything that you know. Whatever you've been taught, you must let it go. You must be like a newborn baby. That's what Christ said. And you must be like a child. 
You must be retaught again. That's what God is commanding us. That's what it means to repent. And what's going to change you so that you subdue your own understanding and change your thinking? The laws of God will do that thing. Give me that in Psalms 19 verse 7. This is what's going to change a girl into a woman, a boy into a man. You understand? A woman into a wife, a man into a husband and a father. The laws of God will do that thing. Watch this. Not politics, not religion, not Christianity. Okay, Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Read that. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Read. The law of the Lord is perfect. Mm -hmm. Converting the soul. Doing what? Converting the soul. So the laws of God, they are perfect. God's commandments, they are perfect. You understand? The laws of God, they are perfect. Converting your soul. God's laws is how you are going to change your thinking. Because the laws of God, what God, God's law says, a man is the head of the house. Christianity and the world and TV says, no, the household is 50-50. God says a man must grow a beard on his face. But the world says, no, shave it off. That's why when you go to Wutliksi, Wutliksi, the Gillette razors and all of that, the aftershave. You understand? God says women must wear a dress and put on a head covering. Wear a modest dress, the flowy dress that we don't see the shape of your body. The world says, show your skin. You understand? Show your body, show your cleavage, show your thighs. That's what the world says. God's law says, no, 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 no. You can't do that. That's what it means to repent. Okay? Read that again. Verse 7. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Read. The law of the Lord is perfect. Mm -hmm. So, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So, God's laws is going to make those of our people that are simple, meaning dumb, the laws, the laws of God are going to give you wisdom. You understand? You know why you're supposed to apply this law. God's law says you're not supposed to eat pork. You're not supposed to eat ingulube. You're not supposed to eat that filthy thing. But our people be going to McDonald's, not McDonald's, steers. By Lord, regard those Russians. Let, those, let that be called. No, no, no. That's why today our people, they get the high blood pressure. They get the stomach cancer. They get the sugar, high sugar, sugar diabetes and all that. Because you are eating the food that is not lawful to eat. Our people go to ocean basket. By Lord, order the calamari, the shrimp, the lobster, the crab. The crab. Mm? That's not lawful to eat. That's not meat. Because God gave us a diet. What you should eat, what you should not eat. That's why today our people, they've got these funny diseases because they are eating the wrong food that is not lawful for them to eat. God's laws will teach you how to eat and what to eat. What is lawful to eat, what is not lawful to eat. As an example. You understand? Now, go back to Acts 3 verse 19. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Read. Repent ye therefore and be converted mm -hmm. that your sins may be blotted out that when the time is be, refreshing. On. That your sins may be wiped away. Because when you repent, you keep the laws of God. Now you start applying the laws of God. You stop doing the evils that you were doing in the world. For instance, birthdays. We're not supposed to celebrate birthdays. That's not our culture. Bad days are evil. Bad days are demonic. Bad days are of the devil. They are not in the Bible for us to celebrate. So when you repent now, guess what? On your bad day, you're not going to, it's just, a, it's just another day. It doesn't mean nothing to you. You don't buy no cake. You don't sing no happy birthday. You tell people not to, not to wish you nothing. Because bad days, they teach our people to worship themselves. Idolatry. Because because I remember there was a sister at camp in Pretoria. She was wearing that thing, you know, that uh, the, the, the thing that the beauty pageants they be wearing when boom is South Africa and all that. And she was wearing that thing that says birthday, happy birthday or something like that. And one thing that I saw with the sister was that, you know, this thing of saying happy birthday, our people get upset about that when you don't wish them happy birthday. They say, you didn't even call me on my birthday. 
Why is that? Why is there such a need for one to for people to want to hear that? Is because they want to worship themselves. They are their own god. That's what bad days are actually teaching our people to be their own god. God says, no, no, no. I'm the only god that you must worship. To hell with the bad days. You understand? That's what it means to be born again. That's why it says we must be like children and be retaught. Okay? Now go back to First Kings. Chapter 8, verse 47 again. First Kings, chapter 8, verse 47. Read. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives and repent mm -hmm. and make supplication unto to thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. So God is telling us what we must say in the lands of our slavery. You are in South Africa. You are scattered over there. This is what you must say. We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. God is even telling us how we must pray to ask for forgiveness when we repent and keep his laws and continue keeping his commandments. That's what God wants. Go ahead. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land. Hold on. Which thou, and do what? And pray unto thee toward their land. So you see what God is commanding us to we must do? When we pray, we must face Jerusalem. It says, and pray, and pray unto thee toward their land. Because we will be in the lands of our slavery, right? So God is saying, when you are in slavery, captivity, when you pray to me, you must face towards Jerusalem. Because that's the land where you come from. You don't just wake up and just be facing anywhere you want. No, no. Because today, our people, in the smartphone, on that smartphone, you can... Only compass. The smartphone they come with a compass. You must open the compass and, and we born or like where is northeast? And then the compass will, will point northeast to you. You say, okay, that's northeast right there. That's Jerusalem. When you pray, that's where you face northeast, your homeland. That's what the Lord is commanding us here. And pray unto thee toward their land. Read on. Which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Come on. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their course. That's the only time when the Lord will be able to maintain our cause. Because we're doing what? The Lord says, once you repent, that's the first, I'm going to give you identity, that's step one. Step two, it says you must repent. Step three says you must humble yourself down to my laws and apply what is written. Then when you pray, face towards Jerusalem, you understand? Verse 49, then it says, then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. If you don't do these things, you, skip, you don't follow these steps here, the Lord is not going to hear you when you pray. He will not hear you. Your prayer will just be blown by the wind. You see, the Most High God, he gave us detailed instruction of how we must do things. You understand? Because he's a parent. He's a parent. You cannot come back to daddy according to how you want. No, no, no. You must follow the rules that the Father gives you exactly the way you are given. Watch this. Now, hmm, I'm just looking at the time now. I don't know if I'm going to get to actually where I want to get to. I wanted to deal with nationality because that's important. Before you can build a nation, you must first understand your nationality first. I think I'm going to do part one of this. Give me the book of Zechariah 12, okay? Zechariah 12 verse 7. Because what's going to happen is that in the last days, now that we're waking up, we remember who we are. This is what the Lord says he would do for the, we will do for the nation by using the prophets to wake the people up. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 7. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 7. Go ahead. The Lord shall save the tents of Judah first. Mm. That, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. 
So now the Lord is saying in the last days, he says, I'm going to wake you up, you Israelites. Now we are in the lands of our slavery. We remember who we are. So the most High God is saying, okay, now that you remember who you are, you remember who you are, now you must repent. I'm going to send the prophets, the men that are going to go out to the street corners to teach you who you are. So guess what? Judah will be the first one that is going to be raised up to go out to the street corners to teach the people who they are. Read that again, verse 7. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. Read. The Lord shall save the tents of Judah first. No, no, no. That the no, glory read of right. the house. Read it correctly. Read verse 7 again. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. Read. The Lord shall save the tents of no. Judah first. The Lord also, the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. So Judah, the tribe of Judah is going to be raised up first. Once Judah is raised up, guess what Judah is going to, guess what Judah will do? Give me the book of Deuteronomy 33 verse 7. Once Judah is raised up, okay, this is what Judah will do. Read that, Deuteronomy 33 verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Verse 7. Come on. And this is the blessing of Judah. This is the what? And this is the blessing of Judah. This is the blessing of Judah. Go ahead. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, mm. and bring him unto his people. Come on. Let his hands be sufficient for him, Come on. and be thou and help to him from his enemies. <laughs> Now, the Lord is saying, once Judah is raised up, read verse 7 again. Read verse 7 so I can catch my thought. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 7. Read. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him and be thou and help to him from his enemies. So God is saying, once Judah, the tents of Judah are raised up, Judah, the blessing of Judah will be to do what? The, it says, hear Lord, the voice of Judah. Judah is going to, once Judah is raised up, Judah will go to the street corners to wake the people up. Judah will be the one to teach the people who they are. The rest of the tribes who they are. Because it says, and bring him unto his people. Judah will know who his people are. Meaning Judah will know who the tribes are and where the tribes are. Judah will have that information. He says, let his hand be sufficient for him. Meaning the most High God is going to bless the tribe of Judah to be able to gather the information together to know where the tribes are and who the tribes are. So that we know when we go to a specific place to teach, we know Israel is over there. We know when we go to another country to teach, Israel is over there. The Lord will put the spirit on Judah to know how to do that thing. You understand? That's why now when you go to the street corners, then primarily the people you see teaching on the streets is the so-called black man. That's Judah. That's babe. That's this is Bible prophecy right here. You understand? So watch this. Now give me the book. Give me the book of Genesis chapter ten because what we just went over is not milk. It's meat. So when our people see us out there when we teach, we know which tribe we come from. It's primarily Judah and Benjamin and Levi. Judah and the, the two companions, Benjamin and Levi. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis, chapter 10. Okay? Genesis 10. Because who is Judah today? Who is Judah? You know who Judah is today because you see the black man on the street corners waking the people up. That's Judah. You understand? Watch this. But let's just drive the point home. Genesis 10, verse 1. Let's read that. Genesis chapter 10, verse 1. Go ahead. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. So these are the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay. So now because our people in the Christian church, they are taught that they are the Gentiles. No, you are not Gentiles. You are the children of Israel. So now the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, we need to know which son we come out of. You understand? Watch this. Now, 
I'm going to show you what the scholars know, okay? This is what the scholars know about us. Let me share my screen, okay? Let me share my screen real quick so we can see. Let me just share my screen. Okay, so now, hmm, let's see. I want you to read. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Read the title of the dictionary. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. So we are going here to, let me see the page. If, did I take the page of this? Mm, I don't believe so. Okay, but we're just going to read the definition of ham in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Let's read that. Read the definition of ham. The definition of ham in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Ham, perhaps hot, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons to live through the flood. Come on. He became the progenitor of the, the dark one? races. The progenitor of the dark races. You see what? He says Ham was the progenitor, meaning the father of the dark races keep going so now we are this is the definition of ham right one of the son of noah because when the white man came over here and particularly when it comes to us he said we are hamites no we are not hamites we don't come from ham i'm going to show you what the white man knows because they hide information in these books okay read on read on not the negroes so now the white man knows that Ham is not the father or the progenitor of the Negroes. The white man knows that. They know that Ham is not the father of the Negroes. But he's going to tell you the children that come out of Ham. Keep going. But the Egyptians, mm -hmm. Ethiopians, Red. Libyans, and Canaanites. So now these are the sons of Ham. Ethiopians, Egyptians, Libyans, and Canaanites. But Ham is not the father of the Negroes. So now, let, that means the scholars know who the father of the Negroes, the father of the Negro, they know the father of the Negroes. Now, let's get the definition of the word Negro. Okay? Read that definition right there. This is from one of the, this is like an old dictionary. You can find this book, these dictionaries in in. The, the old dictionary, go to libraries, you'll find dictionaries of the 1600s, 1800s, and so forth. You'll find these, these type of, these, these definitions. You know, just get an old big dictionary, you'll find these things. Read that, Negro. Negro, one of a dark-skinned race, having woolly hair. Stop right there. Negro, one of a dark-skinned race, having woolly hair. That's the same thing we're reading about when we read the book of Revelation 114, that Christ had woolly hair. Daniel 7 verse 9, it tells you the heavenly father has woolly hair. That right there tells you the most high God is a so-called Negro. Read that thing again. Negro, mm -hmm. one of a dark-skinned race having woolly hair. Come on. Flat nose. Mm -hmm. Thick protruding lips. Thick protruding lips, meaning we've got big lips, big lips, flat nose, big lips. Go ahead. And a prognathous form of skull. Read. Native to Africa. So the Negro is native to Africa. Okay, keep going. Watch this. Where the term Negro applies most specifically to the Bantu stock of the South. Uh-huh. And the people of the central and west areas near the Gulf of Guinea. That's what I was showing you on the maps. You understand? So the Negro, he comes, he, 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 the, the word Negro applies most specifically to the Bantu stock. Who are the Bantus? Hmm. You might be asking. Let's read the definition of Bantu right there. Bantu. A family of Negroid peoples. Mm -hmm. who occupy equatorial and southern africa equatorial equatorial and southern africa that's what we read in zephaniah 3 it says beyond the rivers of ethiopia my suppliants the daughter of my dispersed 
So the word Negro, Negroes and Bantus are the same people. Bantus and Negroes, because on this side in, the, in South Africa, guess what we are called? Bantus. In America, we are called Negroes, but he's making reference to the same people. You understand? That's Judah right there. That's Judah right there. You understand? Hmm. Okay, so let me exit out of this. Read Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy 33 verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 7. Go ahead. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah and bring him unto his people. Mm -hmm. Let his hands be sufficient for him and be thou in help to him from his enemies. So now the Lord is saying, listen, the, the, the blessing of Judah will be what? To go out to the street corners to wake up the people. Judah is the one that is going to go out and know who his people are and where his people are. That's heavy. Because the Lord is saying in Isaiah, it says, we don't know who our owner is. We don't know where we come from. When Judah comes, Judah, the Lord will put the spirit on Judah to restore identity back to the rest of the tribe by giving them who they are when they come from. That's some heavy stuff right there. Give me that in Genesis 49, okay? Genesis chapter 49. I'm almost done. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 8. Genesis chapter 49 verse 8. Read. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Come on. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. So it says, Judah, it says, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. How is that? Who's Judah's brethren? The rest of the tribes. Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Zebulon, Naphtali. You understand? So on and so forth. So the Lord is saying, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. The brethren, meaning what? They're going to give Judah respect. Why? Because Judah will be the one that the Lord will wake up to go out there to teach the tribes who they are. You understand? It says, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. When you examine during the 60s, right? The 60s and the 50s, the 1900s, Judah, I'm just talking about on this side of the earth, for instance, in South Africa, you had Enoch Ngijima in the 1900s that was teaching our people who they are, that they are the children of Israel. You understand? Then you had during the, the Black Consciousness Movements, the Sharpville Massa, the Sharpville, the Soweto Uprising, Sharpville and so forth. When our people were fighting for equal rights, they say, no, they, they, they're looking for rights and all that. Who was primarily fighting the Boers? The black man. So that's why he says, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. So Judah will be the one that will be going out there fighting toe to toe with the white man. You still see it today. It's still going on till today. That's the spirit of Judah right there. That was Judah. That's the spirit of Judah right there. You understand? Who's Steve Biko? Judah. Okay? Chris Hani. Judah. Those are the people that were fighting. You understand? And when you examine, when you look at uh, in the US, you had Malcolm X, you have got you had, uh, Martin Luther and so forth. You understand? Harriet, Harriet Tuckman. You had those, those, you had um, Stokey Carmichael. There's a lot of them in the US because that's where the truth started, but it spread throughout the earth. But on this side of the earth also, the Lord was waking up our people in the 1900s already. You understand? Enoch Mkijima. That's a Judite. You understand? So what I'm showing you is this is Bible prophecy regarding that. I'm just dealing with Judah for now. You understand? So Judah will wake up the people. Go ahead, verse 9. Come on. Judah is a lion's wealth. Mm -hmm. The lion of the Judah. Prey. Judah is a, hold on. Judah is a lion's wealth. Judah. That's our symbol right there. Judah. Go ahead. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. You see that thing? From the he prey, my down. son. Hold on. The, from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. The prey is the Bible. We left the Bible because it says he stooped down. Because during the 60s, during the 50s, 
when our people were fighting with the white men for, you know, they say they were rising up to overthrow the government and all of that, the apartheid regime and so forth. It seemed like this thing was going to work. It seemed like the black consciousness movement was going to work. It seemed like when the when Albert Lutuli and them they started the ANC, it seemed like it was gonna work. When Inogum Gijima also he started, it seemed that he was going to succeed. That's why it says he stooped down. You know, when a lion stooped down, ready to prance to catch the prey, that's how it looked like. You understand? Read. He stooped down. He mm -hmm. couched as a lion. Come on. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? So now he says he stooped down, he couched as a lion. So that lion, it got, it got old. The lion got old. He says, and he couched as a lion and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Because how did we become that old lion? I'm going to show you how we, got, we became that old lion. Give me the book of Colossians 2. This is how we became that old lion. You understand? He says, as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? How did Judah become that old lion? Watch this. Colossians 2 verse 8. Read that. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Come on. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Come on. After the tradition of men, mm -hmm. after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. So now, how did Judah become spoiled as an old lion? Because what, how do we be, become an old lion? Because we were spoiled with what? We were spoiled with the philosophies of men. We were spoiled with politics. We were spoiled with religion. We were spoiled with economics. You understand? They promised us lies. You understand? That's why our people, they don't want to leave politics. They don't want to re leave re these religious systems and all that economic freedom in our lifetime. Those are just fairy tales because this is how Judah became an old lion. We were spoiled through philosophy and vain deceit, meaning empty lies. After the tradition of men, we went after man-made traditions. Like what? Politics is a man-made tradition. It's the religion of the Greeks. You understand? Christianity, that's a man-made tradition. So that's how we became old because of the philosophies that men made up and we, they taught us those philosophies. That's how Judah became that old lion. It says, who shall rouse Judah up? Go back to Genesis 49. Genesis 49, verse 9 again. Genesis chapter 49, verse 9. Read. Judah is the lion's whelp mm. from the prey, my son. Thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? So who's go, who was going to raise Judah up? Who was going to raise Judah up? Because as Judah became an old lion. How did we become an old lion? Because we went into politics, we went into religion, we went into the so-called economic plan and all that for our people, like Julius Malema's pushing, that didn't help us. Toy toying, that did not help us. Voting, that did not help none of us. We're still at the bottom. You understand? So that those are the things that made us old. We became that old lion. Who shall rouse him up? Go back to Zechariah 12 verse 7. The only one that was going to raise Judah up from, that, from being that old lion was who? Jesus the Christ. Zechariah 12 verse 7. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 7. Read. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. You see that thing? The Lord was the only, the most like God, Christ is the only one that was going to raise Judah up from being that old lion to being that young, powerful, ferocious, courageous lion like you see us this day. So now the Lord is the one that I'm going to wake Judah up. And when Judah takes all of this Bible, you're going to see some havoc on this earth. That's why when you look at on this side of the earth, the white man, the Buddhists, I mean, you need to ask yourself, well, why did they have such a deep hatred for the black man? Why? Because if you look at, if you listen, look at the way the black man is oppressed. You see it here on this side of the earth during apartheid. You see it on that side in America during Jim Crow. The black man was the one that the white man had his foot on his neck. 
Why? Because the white man knows that once Judah wakes up, Judah is going to cause havoc on this earth with this Bible. That's why the black man is, they make sure that the black man is always in jail. The black man is always painted negatively in the media all the time because they are afraid of Judah taking hold of this Bible. So they are keeping the black man busy, car social media, car politics, car religion, car economics and all of that. They are keeping the black man busy. They don't want the black man to come back to this Bible because they know once Judah takes hold of this Bible, it's a wrap. It's done. Read that again, verse 7. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. Read. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, mm -hmm. that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. That's going into northern kingdom. That's why the Lord wake, woke us up first before he woke up northern kingdom. Wake, northern kingdom is waking up now. But Judah is the first one that the Lord says, I'm going to wake Judah first. You understand? And once Judah wakes up, Judah will go out to the streets. Give me that in Isaiah 13, verse 2. I'm almost done. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 2. Read that. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. So now this is God commanding as it says, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. What is the banner? The banner is the Bible. Judah is going to lift up the banner. The banner is going to lift up the Bible upon the high mountain. Meaning mountain is talking about these great kingdoms, these great governments against the great governments. Exalt the voice unto them. Meaning go to the streets and teach the people. You understand? Shake the hand, correct them. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. That's why I don't know how many times they call the police on us when we're teaching on the streets. But that's what we're reading here. People don't want to hear our people not wanting to hear the word of the Most High. You understand? That's what we're reading right here. Give me that in Isaiah 62, verse 10. It says, Lift ye up a banner. A banner is the Bible. This banner that we're supposed to lift up is the Holy Bible. That's what we are doing right now. Okay. Read that. Isaiah 62, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 10. Read. Go through. Go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up. Cast up the highway. Gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. The standard is the Bible. The standard is the banner, which is the Holy Bible. That is what we're doing right now. And we exalt the voice unto them. You know, shake the hand. You are correcting the people. Setting them in order to teaching, commanding them to repent. You understand? Give me that in Luke 14, 23. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and mm -hmm. compel them to come in that my house may be filled. So God is commanding us. Christ is commanding says, go out into the highways and hedges. Go to the street corners and compel them. You know what it means to compel? Force them to come into this truth. How do we force them? We correct them to their face. The Lord says, don't be afraid of their faces. Don't be afraid of, because our people, when they come to camp, you see, they try to intimidate us because, you know, hoping that we're going we're gonna to pick up and go. No, no, we don't do that. The Lord says, compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Force them. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Shove the laws of God down their throat. That's what the Most High God, he says, compel. Force them to come in that my house may be filled. So we don't got time to play. You understand? So... I'm going to end the class right here. This is part one of nation building. Nation building, this is part one. On the moral lost will, I will do part two. Okay, because I really want to go into part two. Part two is very important also. Okay, part two is... Hmm. Okay, let's break bread. Um, in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for laying his life down for us.
For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. These do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For his cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Most High hand for that. All praises to the Most High. All praises. 